Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So now let us continue with example number three. So in this example, we have a gate such that water exists on both sides of the gate, but the level of the water on the left hand side and the right hand side of the gates are different. So here we have a gate with width W and on the left hand side, the water level is up to here. Whereas on the right hand side, the water level is halfway up the height of the gate. So we have to consider the hydrostatic force on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the gate individually. And then after that, we can balance the movements due to this individual hydrostatic force acting on the left and then on the right side of the gate. And from there, we can obtain the force G, which is required to open the gate. Force G is applied at the end of the gate in the directions which is perpendicular to the gate. So now if we consider the schematic diagram of the gate, so this is the gate. So on the left hand side, the water level is up to here, whereas on the right hand side, the water level is up to here. And we are applying a force here, 90 degree to the gate, at the end of the gate, and the gate is hinged here. So first of all, we need to consider the individual hydrostatic force. Let's consider, first of all, hydrostatic force acting on the left side of the gate. So in order to do that, we have to, first of all, draw the normal view of the part of the gate which is submerged underwater on the left hand side. So the whole of the gate is submerged underwater on the left side of the gate. So if we draw the normal view, so that is the, the normal view of the gate. And we call that one A left, representing the left hand side of the gate. Then, as usual, we determine the locations of the center of gravity. So I call this C O G left. And that gives us H bar left. And from there, we know that the hydrostatic force on the left side of the gate will be acting slightly below the COG, so I call that one F hydrostatic left through a point which we call the COP, so that is COP left. Next, we consider the hydrostatic force acting on the right side of the cube, so for that purpose, we need to consider the part of the gate which is submerged underwater. So the normal view of that surface there and the so that area I call that one a right and that will be the COG right. And that means that the distance is H R right. And the hydrostatic force will be acting slightly below F hydrostatic right. And it is actually acting through the COP right. Okay, and then we know that this distance is what we call YCP left. And then this distance here from here to here, this is YCP right. Then the width of the gate is equal to W. So 
for the left hand side the whole of the gate is underwater so this is just equal to h and then for the right hand side the width is w the height which is submerged underwater is actually equal to h over 2. So now we can calculate the individual hydrostatic force acting on the left hand side and then on the right hand side. So let's do this one by one. Yeah? So F hydrostatic left, first of all, is equal to rho G H bar left A left. H bar left is actually this distance here. So this distance here is equal to, from here to here is equal to H. And this is h over 2. So from that to there is 3h over 2. So this is 3h over 2 sine theta. What about a left? a left is equal to wh. And from there, we can get f hydrostatic left, which is equal to rho g. 3h over 2 sine theta w or 3 h w rho g sine theta divided by 2. Now ycp left ycp left is equal to isx left over h bar left a left sine theta so i x x left is actually w h cube divided by 3 and then h bar left is 1 over 3 h over 2 and then multiply by 1 over w h multiply by sine theta over sine theta that gave me why CP left is equal to H over 18. So that is why CP left. So why CP left is actually this distance here. So now let's determine the hydrostatic force on the right hand side, FHR, and then why CPR, which is here. So F hydrostatic right is equal to rho G H R right, A right. So h bar right, h bar right is, is this distance here. So basically that is h over 4 sine theta. This is h over 2, so that's h over 4 sine theta. And then a right is this distance here, so w h over 2. So that gives me F hydrostatic right, which is equal to rho g h over 4 sine theta multiplied by w h over 2. So that gives me rho g h squared sine theta w divided by e. Next. YCP right is equal to IXX right over H bar right A right sine theta and that is equal to IXX is W H cube over 12 by 8 because it's H over 2 to the power of 3 that becomes H cube over 8 multiply by 1 over h of 4 sine theta multiply by 1 over w h over 2 sine theta and that gives me h over 12. So now we have obtained magnitude for f hydrostatic left and then y c p left and then F hydrostatic right, and then Y C P right. In order to calculate the force G, which is required to open the gate, we need to balance the moment. 
So if we consider the hydrostatic force on the left hand side of the gate, so this is the hydrostatic force, the moment about the hinge will be equal to F hydrostatic left multiplied by this distance here, if I call this one here R left. And then after that, the moment due to the hydrostatic force on the right will be equal to F hydrostatic right multiplied by this distance here. I call this one here R right. Okay. So the clockwise moment will be generated by G. So G multiplied by this distance, which is equal to H plus F hydrostatic right multiplied by R right. And this must be balanced by the anti-clockwise moment, which is created by F hydrostatic left multiplied by R left. So now if we take moment about the change, so balancing moment about hinge, so we must have F hydrostatic left, R left must be equal to F hydrostatic right, R right plus G H right. Okay, so now if we calculate R left, so R left is actually equal to this distance here. So this is from there to there is h over 2, so it's h over 2 plus ycp left. So that's h over 2 plus h over 18 and that gives us 5h over 9. Okay, whereas the R right, so R right will be this distance here, so that will be equal to H over 2 plus H over 4 plus YCP right, so that is 3H over 4 plus H over 12, that gives us 5H over 6. So if you call this equation here, equation 1, and we can rearrange equation 1 now in order to get G. So from 1, we get G is equal to F hydrostatic left, R left, minus F hydrostatic right, R right, divided by H. So if I just substitute the value, F hydrostatic left is equal to 4G3H squared over 2 sine theta W multiplied by 5H over 9 minus by F hydrostatic right, which is equal to 4GH squared sine theta W over 8, 5 h over 6 divided by h. So now if I bring the common terms out, so I have rho g w h squared sine theta, 5 over 6 minus 5 over 48. So that gives me g is equal to 35 over 48 rho g w h squared sine theta. So if I go through again what we just did just now, so basically we consider the forces individually on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So we determine the forces on the left hand side by considering the area of the gate which is submerged on the left hand side. So we obtain the F hydrostatic left and the YCP left. And then for the hydrostatic force acting on the right hand side, so we consider part of the gate which is under the water. So we obtain the F hydrostatic right and then YCP 
right and from there what we did balancing the movement about a hinge so we'll be able to obtain expressions that give us relationships between the force g and hydrostatic force on the left hand side and then in the right hand side of the gate and from that we can determine the magnitude of the force g required to open the gate